Hi, welcome back. Uh, so I've been learning Unreal Engine 5 a lot lately um, and kind of documenting my process uh, as I try out new audio systems and cool interactive adaptive audio things, um, as well as just kind of learn cool things uh, with my dog around. All right, for this first project, I started from the ground up and built a whole world for me to test out some audio in. Um, and for this first audio example, I set up a nice ambient music track that plays when you load the scene and then as you enter a certain area uh, it's as if you're stumbling upon a string ensemble concert um, and I did all this using Unreal Engine's uh, visual scripting system blueprints so we'll quickly check out the world itself and then I'll show you how I did all that stuff All right, so I created a quick sound cue just from this file here. That's what I want to have start playing when I start the scene. So I just uh, right clicked and created cue. Um, and I'm going to drag that sound cue into here. Um, but I'm going to get rid of the audio from it because I want to actually call this in a blueprint. Um, name background music is fine. All right, so now I'm going to go into the level blueprint. And basically, I have that uh, track selected right now, so I can create a reference to background music that only appears if it's selected. All right, and then from there, I'm gonna say set sound. And set sound for audio component is great. Basically, that's just saying it's gonna call the component of this part here. And that audio component is what I want because that's gonna play the music. All right, then I take this. I'm gonna set the sound as my background cue double check it's the right one all right and now I want that to play when I start the game and so to do that I need an event begin play node here and then I'm gonna connect that so this is saying an event begins play it's playing that sound and it's using the audio component that I added in all right from there I'm gonna drag off the audio component 
And I'm gonna say fade in. And let's make it fade in over two seconds, sure. And then just connect these guys. Beautiful. All right, and I'm just gonna clean it up a smidge. All right, now when I file save, go back, it should just start the track. Beautiful. All right, so now I need to uh, make it so that when I go over the trigger box, it is going to fade the music out so that I can hear that other stuff and then it'll fade it back in when I trigger it again. To get that trigger box, I'll mention real quick, you just go up here, click that, and then under the place actors in basic, there is a trigger box. I can just drag that and drop it in. And from there you can, you know, resize it uh, however we want. We can scale it up or down, we can move it all around, and that will get the trigger box. So I'm gonna select my trigger box, I named it Music Fade In Out so that it was nice and simple for me to remember. And I'm gonna go here, and then as I selected that, now I get the references to this thing. And I wanna add an event, I'm gonna go to Collision, on, uh, add on actor begin overlap. So when an actor is overlapping that box, something's gonna happen. Um, and I want that to be the player, so I'm gonna say get player pawn. All right, so now I'm gonna say when it overlaps, if that thing that overlaps is the player pawn, and so to do that, I'm gonna say equals, I'm gonna connect the, if the, um, the actor that is overlapping is the uh, player pawn, it equals that. Uh, then I'm gonna create a little branch so that I can say that that's true. All right, if that's true, I'm gonna use a uh, flip-flop node which basically just means the first time it goes through it, it's gonna do A, the second time it goes through, it's gonna do B, and then it's just gonna keep flipping back and forth between them, uh, which will make it so that I can, you know, swap it between fading out and fading back in. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it over here. I'm gonna copy it and paste it again down here. All right, so B, I want it to fade in like the second time, so I'm gonna overlap, it's fade out, come back, fades back in. And so that's what B is gonna do, so I can just connect B right up there. Uh, the thing I want to not have overlap uh, when I do it this first time here is that I don't want it to set the sound again, because uh, if I set the sound again as it overlaps, it'll start the track again and then fade that out, and that'll sound weird, so I can get rid of that. A, I'm just gonna go straight into fade out. All right, this looks beautiful. And then, so for this, you know, I can take it all, put a little comment by highlighting and pressing the C button. And this is just gonna be play music. And then let me create a little space here. Select all this stuff. And I'm gonna say overlap trigger box. All right, compile. Save, I'm silly. All right, I said fade in, that obviously doesn't work. I want to drag off the audio component and say fade out. I'm gonna fade that out over two seconds. All right, this always happens. All right, <laughs> now, now that should work. I'm gonna go back in, try it again. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just gonna sprint there this time. and then by the time this will come in, and then if I want to leave this part and go investigate again. Music fades back in, hooray. All right, so that worked. So basically this is saying, if the thing that overlaps is the player and they're equal, that's gonna go to a branch here with a true or false if that's true, then it's gonna go to the flip-flop thing. And the first time it's gonna fade out, make sure we have the fade out. And for the fade out, it's referencing the audio component of the background music thing that I 
already called up here. And then the second time, it's gonna set the sound, play it again, and it'll just keep flipping back and forth. All right, awesome. So now we're gonna fly over to this part of the scene where I've got a bunch of cellos and violins set up. So basically, I'm gonna make it so that when I walk through this box, which is this these green lines here that are kind of floating, um, it's gonna make it so that this all starts playing, and I'm gonna make it so that each one of these has their own sound attached to it. So I've got four cello sounds, uh, three violin sounds, and I'm gonna try to make it so that each one feels like it's coming from the position that I've uh, placed it. And so to do that, I'm gonna place my cello stem here. I'm gonna zoom up to it. I'm basically just trying to get it into a nice rough spot to where the sound of a violin would come out. All right, and then, or a cello in this case. Um, and then I need to set up an attenuation. So I did that already here, but basically to do that, you just uh, would go into the audio spot, spatialization, and set up a sound attenuation, which is gonna give it the space in the world. So like when I click this one that's already got it set up, uh, it's got this. I'm gonna unlight the scene so you can see it better. All right, so this is with the attenuation, so that's gonna be the center where the sound is the loudest, and it's gonna slowly decay as it goes out here, kind of like it actually would. Um, you can kind of target these in multiple directions if you want, but this is how I'm setting it up for now. All right, so I need to light it back up so we can see the prettiness here. All right, so first thing I need to do, there's a couple of settings in the cello loop. Uh, first one is I wanna make sure it is looping, and then if I scroll down in this uh, spot here, I wanna make it play when silent. I think it starts on restart, um, which means like if I get away from the sound and come back, the sound will restart from the beginning, um, which I don't want in this case. I wanna play, I want it to play while I'm not there uh, to give it that kind of sensation that I'm just like stumbling upon a bunch of people playing these instruments. All right, and I have cello four selected right here. I'm gonna scroll down, you can see it's got the sound of cello four automatically just because I dragged that uh, loop directly in. And then in the attenuation, I'm gonna select that cello attenuation. You can see it added this. All right, so when I'm outside of this box, I won't hear it at all. All right, so now I need to make it so that when I cross this, it's gonna play that. And so I'm gonna click my my box here. I'm opening up the level blueprint. And in the level blueprint, since I've selected the trigger box, I can now um, add an event for that. And I'm gonna add an event for when uh, actor begin overlap. And I wanna make it so that it's when my player is overlapping. And so I'm gonna get a get player pawn node. And so basically I want when it's overlapping and if it's my player, um, I'm gonna do that with an equal node, so it's like, is the overlapping actor my player? And if that's true, do once. I'm gonna do a do once node so that if the thing that overlaps is my player, it's gonna do a thing once. And the thing I want it to do uh, is gonna be play these audio files. So I'm gonna select my cello four, one that I just dragged in, and I'm gonna create a reference to it. All right, and then specifically the um, audio component within that. So I'm gonna get the audio component and then I'm gonna select play. So that's gonna play the sound from the audio component. Connect that, I need that connected to that. All right, so now it's saying if these conditions are met, it's gonna do this once and the thing it's gonna do once is play and it's gonna play the sound coming from my cello four here. Um, I've already done that with all the other ones here, kind of got them set up, just so you weren't watching me set that up, because that would be extra boring. All right, but I do need to connect all of these audio components to the target so it knows what to play. All right, I'm gonna compile, save, and then when I go back to it, uh, it should play, when I start here, it'll play the music that I previously set up. When I cross this thing, it's gonna fade out the music like I told it to do in the other blueprint. Cross the next one, it's gonna start this playing, and this should all be playing at once, and all of the attenuations are set up. So if I unlight it, 
un once it's unlit, I guess you could say, um, you can see that one is going to be. So if I stand here, I should be able to hear it, but I can get close. So all of them are kind of designed to make it so I can stand on this podium and basically be the conductor of this, but I can walk around and hear all of them. All right, so let's check it out. <laughs> 